The growing of vanilla here on Rarotonga has recently started to take off, with a few locals around the island getting into the vanilla growing scene. Currently, there are four vanilla plantations on Rarotonga, with three of them being well established. Tiriki Matinga has been a local vanilla grower since 2010 and has a 600 square metre piece of land which takes 800 plants under a shade house. Matinga admits the vanilla industry is still in its infant stage where growers are still learning how to manage their plantation properly but are well aware of the potential vanilla has here in the Cook Islands. There's always huge potential. You gotta you gotta understand that vanilla is the second most expensive uh, herbs I think they call it or spice mm. uh, compared to saffron. Yeah. And saffron is the ultimate and, and vanilla is the, the next best. Yeah. So it, it will always be that way as far as the norm is concerned. Yeah. You know. The growing of vanilla is labour intense and not for the faint hearted. Vanilla is one of the most labour intense crops that you can venture into and if you look at our lifestyle over here we are actually not equipped to get into vanilla, not in a big way. So which means we need assistance in the labour to, to, to accomplish this, this dream that we have. June Bodine is another local vanilla grower and has been nurturing her plot since 2011. She started off with about 300 plants and had her first lot of beans last year, which she sells at her shop, Rainer Trading. Both Tiriki and June recognises local growers don't have enough vanilla to market it internationally just yet. First, we need to understand the market. The market out there is huge. And secondly, we need to understand what's the return we're going to get from the vanilla. We've already priced ourselves crazy last year. I know, I, and, and I have to say that, honestly, that we priced our local beans at a ridiculous price because I went to New Zealand and I went to look at all the importers. Um, and, and today we had uh, the guy from Heilala and he's told us the price, the export or the wholesale price of the dry beans. Now. There's about 60 raw beans or green beans, we call it, when they pick to make one kilo, roughly about 60. It takes four kilos of raw beans. When you finish drying it, it becomes one kilo of dry beans. And let's say we're talking about 100, 100, $80 to $100 a kilo. Now, if you can get $100 from a kilo of dry beans. Uh, where else are you going to get $100 from? And we have land masses just wasted in Achu. I don't want to talk about other island. I'm talking about Achu. And I want to go there before I run out of steam. And I have to do it sometime this year to encourage the women. I've spoken to my family and asked them to put one to three acres, identify the area. And, and, and that's where we're going to target. Currently, local vanilla is only being sold in very small amounts to tourists and a number of local buyers at a very good price. This local market, however, may eventually swing into the international scene as the result of the recent visit from John Ross, founder of Heilala Vanilla that is grown out of Tonga. We are having trouble getting enough vanilla from Tonga. So we currently buy some from Madagascar to make up the shortfall, but we, our supply seems to be going up by about half a tonne a year. So we're looking at other countries in the Pacific to buy vanilla from. And um, our story and our brand is, is a Tongan brand, um, very important. But if we could buy vanilla from the Cook Islands, then we would change the branding. We would still want to use the Hala brand because we've spent 10, 12 years building that up and it's getting to be known worldwide. <clears throat> but down here we'd have um, maybe product source, Cook Islands, Rarotonga or whatever. So it would be sold under the Hala brand but be Cook Island on too. Maybe we would say it's um, 
Cook Island vanilla, um, and we'd want to tell a story about from the Cook Islands. Hey Lala Vanilla started in 2012 and grows the richest grade of vanilla in the Asia Pacific region. Ross's expertise was shared with local growers for the first time on his recent visit to help kickstart what Ross believes to be an industry that has great potential to drive the local economy. There's many ways that you can grow vanilla and I think there's probably been here, people here in the past telling people what they should do and then they disappear and never see them again and the next person comes, tells them something different, they go away and never see them again. So I really think what needs to be done here, they need somebody who is um, employed by either the ministry or somebody to um, focus on vanilla growing and go and meet the farmers and work with the farmers, not just tell them what to do, but help them um, get their hands dirty and do some pruning and, um, and looping of the vines and teach them what to do and give them some enthusiasm, not just for a one yearly visit, but year after year after year to get the whole industry going. If quantity is the way of the future for the Cook Highlands vanilla industry, ideas on setting a vanilla corporation in order to control the mechanism and management of the vanilla industry will be needed. If we do achieve to go down that road in, in quantity, that's what it's all about, it's quantity. And probably one of the biggest challenges that we have today is to try and, and bring all the growers back into one um, association, in one group. Um, it's, it's the only way we can actually build the quantity that we're looking for to, to, to exploit the, the overseas market. Otherwise, if we go as individuals, um, I'm afraid to say it is not going to work. Because all we'll do is end up fighting for the local market over here and you know, with the competition so intense, you'll, you'll probably end up giving the beans away. Vanilla is also currently growing on the island of Achu and Mangaia.